good morning, everybody. You joined Qualcomm as an engineer in 1995. That's I bring right. that up for two reasons. One, it was your birthday yesterday. Uh, belatedly, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. I won't, I won't date you, but you've also seen the arc of, of technological development. We know Qualcomm as this, well, as the largest maker of smartphone processors, the brains inside the handsets that are all pointing at you right now taking photos. The question, is Qualcomm an AI company? Look, this is a, this is a great question to ask. And, um, you know, it's, it's incredible to see all of the development you see right now on, on AI. Here's, here's how I answer that question. Actually, it's very simple. Uh, if you think about the uh, AI, when you think about semiconductor, it's really accelerating computing, right? You do a lot of computation. Um, and what we see, what you can do with those large language models, uh, large models for images and video. So if you think about the history of computing, computing starts in the cloud and it gets scale at the edge. I think that's, that's what happens with CPUs. Yes. Uh, that's, that's what happens uh, uh, with all other form of computing. And I think the smartphone is a great example of that. Um, if you look, the largest computing platform uh, ever developed is the smartphone right now. It's the largest development platform for mankind. And, and what is good about the smartphone, it's, uh, it's a device that are with you all the time. So if AI becomes pervasive, which we believe it will become pervasive, especially when you look about how those uh, large models, they are very natural, how you, uh, you can converse with them, you, they have contextual information and all of those things. That's going to happen at the edge. So ha that's how you should think about Qualcomm. If AI is going to get scale, you're going to see it running on Qualcomm Snapdragon devices, whether it's in your phone, in your car, in your PC, and into other machines. And I think well, that's a great opportunity for us. If the future is to democratize access to artificial intelligence tools, generative AI tools, and Qualcomm's going to make that happen, why are you not getting like Jensen Huang level love? Uh, look, I think, at the, at the, I think what's happening right now, and by the way, it's great for the semiconductor industry, for anybody that has been on the forefront of computing. You know, Qualcomm is probably used to be well known as a communication company, but actually, if you look at what we do right now, it's more of a connected processor company than communication. And as those models started to become very popular, uh, they're going to be running at the edge, and I expect that AI becomes an option on Qualcomm right now. And look, and I'll give you an example. I, it's, it's, I saw something that Adam said, I think, in the prior conversation when he said something about in 1997, if you try to guess who are the winners and losers on the Internet, it would be probably a very wild guess. I think what we see today is this generative AI opportunity is huge. We don't know yet all of the different applications that are going to come up. We're seeing that just, just within the past six months, it's a revolution the number of companies coming with use cases. And those use cases are going to happen on devices, and I think that's going to be a great opportunity for Hold that thought. What we're going to do now, I'm going to show you something to the audience here and, and those with us virtually. But during that, think about questions for Cristiano based on what you see. So with that, let's bring up the video. And Cristiano, when it comes up and plays, explain to us a little bit what it is that we're seeing. Because here at the Bloomberg Technology Summit, we're going to nail the technology any second. Just, just wait. The video is going to come. <laughs> and when it does, it will have been worth the wait. Here we go. Yes. So what you basically see is a control net demo. You have an input image on your phone. You tell in your input prompt, what do you want the image to be? You want it to make it a masterpiece, look like Venice canals, 4K, and it just runs and, and give you this very unique image, image to image, that's never been created before, created to AI, running on your phone. So it's a good, I think, uh, time to talk a little bit about how we think about AI at the edge, outside the data center. Because I've, like we have seen everywhere, there's going to be this huge opportunity for the cloud, but it's going to be this huge opportunity for devices. Because what you do on the device is very different. So there's, there's 
a number of reasons why this is going to be very popular on the device. First, the device has contextual information about you and has real-time information, like a picture you just took. Uh, and you want it right now, at that moment, change that picture and share with somebody else with your you know, messaging platform. For context, that video, that device was run in airplane mode without any external connection, right? It ran the model locally on device. Absolutely. So that's one of the reasons. You have real-time contextual information. There's another reason. Uh, processing on the phone is virtually free. Uh, when you think about you running those models in the cloud and, and think about a large language model for every token, like a word as the sentence. If you do that, if you have an experiment that you see the words coming up, for every token you're running the entire model and you use a lot of cloud computing. But the computing that is in the palm of your hand, in the dashboard of your car, in your computer, that processing power is available and is dedicated to you. So that's another reason you're going to run those on the, on the devices. The, the number three reason is you can see this, and there's a lot of academia work. Those models, when they get very well trained, they become smaller. So one of the things we have done that's very unique to Qualcomm, we spent a decade on this. I think we, we invested in this before it was popular. Um, it's kind of the history of many of the things that in Qualcomm done on research. What we did is could we come up with ability to do very high process, uh, high performance accelerated computing on the device running large number of parameters and you can do it for example in a phone without compromising battery life because you're going to never trade the form factor and the battery life. You expect it to do all this computation and still last all day. So we developed some very unique technology, which is the most efficient accelerated computing from a performance per watt. And we're bringing that to all of our devices, just to give an order uh, magnitude. The new Snapdragon processor we're gonna launch this year for flagships that come to the market 24 is gonna support in excess of 10 billion parameter models running locally on the device. On what we're gonna do it in Windows on uh, ARM, uh, platform is going to be over 20 billion uh, parameters. What we're going to do in cars is going to be in the order of 40 to 60 billion parameters running on the device. So, so when you think about it, when you see all of those models being well trained and become smaller, we're going to see the development of what we call hybrid AI. You would do a query, like you just did this query. You had this picture, you wanted to do this. If the model's very well trained, it'll run on a device and it's going to cost nothing well, to the cloud. I think the question that the audience will have, and I have, is, you know, say shipping in 2024, but how real is this? The, the, the demonstration showed you running a 1.5 billion parameter model. When can we do that? Oh, For real? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's more real than you think. For example, stable diffusion, which is text to image, um, this summer uh, we're getting to sub five seconds. Um, if with no cloud connectivity. Uh, in, in our Snapdragon Summit, we're gonna show 10 billion parameters running, and you'll be able to buy, for example, if you wanna buy a Galaxy S24 uh, that launches next year, you're gonna have that uh, computing power. So there are lots of engineers that I speak to, you are yourself an engineer, and they, they do express skepticism that this is going to happen, that all of us will be running large language models or generative AI tools locally on device without connection with billions of parameters because they doubt the processor power or they doubt the work that you yeah. can do at Qualcomm on the algorithms. Where did you do the innovation? Okay, so, so this, is a, this is a good question and that's why I was about to tell you about how we think about hybrid AI exactly like your phone works today. You have a lot of applications in your phone. You go to the app store, you have a lot of apps, and the apps are being processing on the device, and they're being processing the cloud. They work as a single uh, computing. So hybrid AI is what's happening right now is really that. You have a model running locally. You provide a query to the model. The model will decide if it runs locally or you give a cloud a head start uh, in sending tokens to the cloud. So it's going to be completely transparent to you. And some applications, it's not just because you don't want to use the cloud. 
you want the fast response on the device because of latency or contextual information. But here's how I like to explain this. When the smartphone happened, I think most people don't remember this. I'm sure I'm, I'm going to show my age. I've been in every transition of technology at Qualcomm. But the, we were the first company that came up with the concept. At the time, we got a Palm OS, a Palm Pilot, connected with cellular, and created the very first smartphone in the world. And this is the time of the feature phones. You use your phone to make calls and texts. That's what you use your phone for. Um, and GPS was just for E911. That's the only application. All of a sudden, this became a computer. And people say, what am I going to do with it? I like to put this example. I remember when we talk about 4G broadband, um, there was a lot of analysts with their Blackberries uh, telling us, who wants this? What, what are you going to do with this? This is a, I, I have everything I need in my BlackBerry. It was an incredible device. Well, we should acknowledge uh, or you know, pull one out. BlackBerry is not really a thing anymore, is it? Well, what it shows is the revolution that happened with all of those applications on your phone. That's how you should think about AI. We're just at the very beginning. Uh, we're just showing some examples, stable diffusion, control net. We're going to have some simple photo. But there's going to be so many different applications. Think about a car, for example. I like this example because as a kid, I used to watch Knight Rider kids. Think about natural language conversation. It's perfect for a car. But right? why is Qualcomm relevant to that discussion? Well, it's just look at what we're doing right now. I think it probably I don't have to tell you about our position in the mobile market. I think uh, especially on, on premium uh, computing for the Android space. Uh, we're now virtually uh, provide of working with every brand, virtually every brand in automotive for next generation digital cockpit. Um, we've been working with Microsoft for the transition of next generation PCs uh, using our silicon. We have been the partner of choice of companies like Meta, Microsoft announced with Google right. and uh, Samsung for augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality devices. And we've been expanding to, uh, in, to industrial internet of things. Let's, let's, let's hit pause for a second, because I know that you're a busy man and you're operating in a lot of fields. Go back to that video and this audience question. Why would I want to locally process a complex model on a small device when those models would run better in the cloud? And yes. I guess that applies to the automotive example as well. Yes. So this is, uh, instead, I provide the answers to those questions in the phone, but I'm going to change the conversation a bit and talk about it in the car. So. When you are inside a car, right, and uh, in, like for example, we have a lot of AI in the car today for assisted driving and autonomy. Just to give an example, if you look at GM, uh, Super Cruise, Ultra Cruise, all running on a Qualcomm AI processor. We have a lot of AI processing in the car. The car needs to make decisions that are very context related in real time. If you, for example, when you think about an ADAS system, uh, assisted driving, the sensors in the car for, uh, for assisted driving autonomy, see an image, you need to make a decision. Uh, that computation needs to happen locally. The reason Qualcomm became successful and we're in expanding in ADAS is because you cannot put a server in the trunk of a car, especially in an EV, take away from the range. But now that computing power you can use for a large language model. In the car, this model can be as big as the model in the cloud. And you have now the real context information. You're talking, let's say you're talking in the car of the future, you're talking to the model like you would in Knight Rider kit. And you want, you, you give a very complex instruction for the car. I want to go home, on the way home, I want to stop here, I want to order this, I want to pick it up. And those things are going to be very related to the information you have. It doesn't mean that you're separating the AI from the car from the cloud. They're all combined. But everything that is contextual rich for that moment, um, the AI in the car is going to make a, a huge difference. In a word, day, weeks, months, probably years, when does that happen? Look, it's very difficult to make a prediction. It's the same try to make a prediction. But broadly. Um, I look. I'm um, I'm an optimist, so I think we're going to start to see next year in 24 for phone applications a lot richer. A lo thank you. Uh, we're going to see a lot richer 
uh, ability to use AI for photography, like this example we just give, um, how people share information, whether it's on WhatsApp or Google Messages, how they're going to share photos, how they're going to create content, you're going to see that next year. Okay. I think you're going to see a lot of productivity uh, next year. We talk with Microsoft. We had incredible demos at Microsoft Build showing the co-pilot of all the Microsoft applications running on our a AI engine in um, our future uh, SOC that has our custom CPU that going to the Windows devices One in device, 24. No connection. In 24. And, uh, and see, this is another interesting thing. Enterprise applications. When uh, chat TBT thing happened, it was an incredible thing. Uh, I immediately had, uh, within the internal memo, say, our engineers can't get our source code and just send it to chat TBT. Uh, to verify this code because that's going to go into the wilderness, right? So enterprises really want in for certain applications to run the data locally. So, so Microsoft has an incredible technology that you can provide a data set. It could be an Excel spreadsheet. And you apply the model on that spreadsheet. That's a great example of why you want to run those things locally. Some enterprises may not want to send the data to the cloud, and that's how the enterprise works. I, I, I know you, and I, I knew that you would be fired up about this, and I've only got 30 seconds left, so let's do this. How's doing business with Beijing at the moment? Look, we have uh, a great partnership uh, with our, our customers in China. I think Qualcomm is probably uh, one of the few examples of a very successful uh, uh, partnership and business with China. All of our customers in China pay intellectual property on cellular essential patents. Uh, uh, we are all licensed, they pay. We have, uh, have a vibrant business on the phone space with companies like Xiaomi, Oppo, OnePlus, Vivo, and uh, Honor, etc. And as China builds an incredible uh, industry for EV, they're all using Qualcomm chipsets. Uh, we're growing in industrial. So here's how I see it. If you are a leader on a particular technology, uh, you should have a big business in China. It's just the nature of the size of the GDP, and that's what we see happening with Qualcomm right very now. Very quickly, or Brad and Emily will be very angry at me. Does AI complicate that relationship with China? No, look, um, you should think, if you think about what's happening, in phones, in PCs, in cars, everything at the edge. Uh, it's one of those things that is very difficult to make predictions in politics, but to this date, we have been able to continue to support development on on-device AI, and I think across all the different industries in China, and there's some very interesting development, especially from the phone industry, how they're using this to create content or support creators. Cristiano, I'm on Qualcomm CEO, making the case basically for the future of AI being on what you're all pointing at me right now, the smartphones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here.